In this week's lecture, we'll cover two of the most important topics of the course, job analysis and job performance. This lecture is divided into five parts. In part one, I'm going to define job analysis and explain what we use it for and what the process looks like. One of the most important tools that IO psychologists use in their work is job analysis. This is the process of studying a job by identifying the job tasks, the job demands, and the characteristics that employees need in order to succeed in that job. We call them KSAOs, knowledge, skills, abilities, and other characteristics. Through this investigative process, we learn all there is to know about a specific job, which then allows us to make decisions about that job and about the people who work in that job. There are two basic types of job analysis. We have task-oriented job analysis, which is really focused on the what of the job, on what someone does in that position, the tasks, the activities, the responsibilities of the job incumbents. Worker-oriented job analysis is more focused on the KSAOs, on the human qualities that are required to meet the demands of the job. Most of the time, we try to find a balance and measure both the tasks and the employees. But sometimes the goals of the project will lead us to focus on one aspect more than the other. There are many different ways that IO psychologists use job analysis. They use it to write job descriptions so they can advertise job openings, to design jobs to make them more efficient, to recruit new job applicants, and sometimes target specific groups of applicants, to select applicants using tests that they develop, to establish competitive pay, to train employees both to identify what they need to learn and also to develop training and development opportunities, to help with succession planning and to identify the different job families, career paths, and opportunities that employees can take in order to reach that next step in their career. IO psychologists also use job analysis when the organization needs to reduce the size of its workforce, when it needs to restructure and change the way that it's organized. Job analysis can help the company identify redundant tasks and areas where it makes sense to eliminate a job. They also use job analysis to develop the criterion to identify the goals we're trying to reach. Are we trying to improve productivity, efficiency, general performance? Job analysis is crucial to assessing performance, to determining whether people meet the performance requirements or not. We have to know what the requirements are in order to measure them. Job analysis allows us to do that. There are two other ways that IO psychologists use job analysis to defend selection and performance tests and to validate selection and performance tests. When it comes to litigation, one of the most important laws that must be followed is Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. This law prohibits intentional and unintentional discrimination of anyone based on race, color, religion, age, sex, and national origin. In 2020, the Supreme Court ruled that sex includes sexual orientation. If we use job analysis to develop selection tests, then we have evidence for why we chose the tests we chose 
why we developed them the way we did. Keep in mind that even the most valid tests may not be job relevant. They may not pass the court's approval. The courts do not look favorably upon the lack of job analysis or the lack of test validation. The process of analyzing a job can be done in many different ways. In this course, you are going to conduct a quick and easy version of a job analysis. You are going to collect information from multiple sources. You are going to use multiple methods for collecting data. You'll then look at the data you have in order to create a job description that could then be used in a variety of human resource functions. The more information we collect, remember triangulation, the better we can understand the job. Not only do people who work in the job, job incumbents, know the job well, their supervisors and other subject matter experts who may be able to provide some insight as well. We can collect data through interviews, questionnaires, observation, and historical records. We might also use work diaries where we ask workers to keep a log of their daily activities and the amount of time they spend doing those activities. We can also use electronic performance monitoring to use technology to do some of the work for us. There are a number of commercial questionnaires available to us. We might also collect information from ONET from the Occupational Information Network. It is a database of information about many different types of jobs. The information is based on national survey data. The organization that puts this database together surveys people from all over the country every year about their jobs. Over the years, they've organized different jobs into job families, which then allow them to determine some of the similarities between jobs. The database also specifies the level of education required by different jobs. Not only does this database help HR managers and IO psychologists, but anyone looking for a job can use it to understand the jobs to which they are applying. The database also provides some labor market information about compensation and growth in that occupation, how in demand the occupation will be in the future. Professionals can use the database to design training programs. When we know what a job requires and we know the KSAOs that our job applicants or our employees have, we can identify gaps or training needs and then create appropriate programs to address those needs. By collecting data from people all over the country, the database is more representative of reality in that occupation. To help you prepare for working with ONET as part of your project, I want to explain the different aspects of a job description in this database. When you search for a job and click on the details report, you will see occupation-specific information and job-specific information. You will see occupational requirements, occupation-specific requirements, as well as occupation characteristics. Things like work activities, tasks, duties, technology that job incumbents work with, labor market information, compensation, the outlook of the occupation. The other half of the information is focused more on the workers and what they need in order to succeed in the job. Things like knowledge, skills, abilities, values, interests, and even work styles. The job description will also tell you the amount of education that is required or certifications that are required for entry into this job. 